All right, guys, we're recording. Let me allow Alex to talk. Yo. Alex, what's up, buddy? I can hear you, man. What's up, man? Can everyone else hear me? Guys, can you hear Alex? Nice, nice. Dude, what's up, man? How's, uh, how's New Jersey, man? <laughs> uh, it sucks, man. We ain't got shit here. <laughs> We got high taxes and we got cold weather. Oh, dude, sign me up, bro. Take my money now. It just sucks, dude. Nothing but fur coats and raped by Uncle Sam. <laughs> you got no idea, bro. Bro, so should we do, should we talk about this gene for a second? This is like I I feel like there's so many new traders just getting slaughtered in this market, man, because they're just not respecting. Like, bro, talk about how unbelievably simple yet effective zombie Bro, i lost money on it today man i shorted the three i shorted when 350 topped out early in the morning i remember bro i remember I shorted 330 and i said my stop is 360 yeah my this was stop, it yeah my stop hit zombie times hit and i was gone bro and dude now, I, had I not fucking stopped out i would have lost triple my money i'm the, bro on the same check this out i was shorting right here outer lines i think i started in 310 to three um i think i hit like 325 i stopped out right here um at about 340 it was kind of a paper cut because i was 30 percent. i absolutely top ticked right here um but then i covered for even and dude once i was break even on a day i left this shit alone and i was like dude draw your line look at this guys if I draw a timestamp line, you see what I just did? This is called a time level line. If I, if I scroll out, so hold on one sec. My computer's being glitchy. If I were to scroll out, <laughs> dude, look how much money we saved. Or look how much money we missed by not going long at 1030, bro. See, that's the bullshit of it, man. Why aren't we flipping long, bro? Honestly, like how many members do we have to teach before we do it ourselves? It's uh, dude, as long as they're nailing it, at least like it makes us feel better because I get DMs all the time that people literally do, they just wait until zombie times and that's when they start their trading. I get so jealous because I'm like, dude, I love that you're doing good, but why can't I do that shit? I'm so dumb, dude. I'm like, I literally will just short the first hour and give up on thousands of dollars throughout the day. I'm like, what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna fucking buy a zombie times and they're gonna have a midday offering. That oh, and that's the one dude that's gonna be like a UAVS type offering. So it's gonna be trading at three and it's gonna open at like 80 cents. Like it's not just gonna be an offering, dude. It's gonna be like a UAVS type offering. <laughs> Yep, but it is what it is, bro. As long as we stay safe, that's a win too. So this gene, I don't care if it closes at six or twelve, tomorrow is gonna be a great trade anyway. Bro, it's already up enough. It's like it's like guys, when when something happens, that I was saying this earlier, you know, and I know Alex actually really taught me this kind of perspective. Think about it like this, man. There are so many plays in the market. If you stop out and you take a loss at 10.30 like me and Alex did today, dude, we know that there's going to be another play on it. Now we just want it as high as possible. So instead of just trying to like find the top all day and be like, oh my God, today's the only day we're going to get a move. Dude, that's the wrong thinking. If you just wait till tomorrow, bro, we're going to have a sick play on this, man. As long yeah. as you can get the borrow. <laughs> that's always like the disclaimer. As long as you have a broker that's good enough. Aravingo's UAVS offering is still of nightmares. It's crazy, man. What, what about you guys? You guys have any questions? Like, how are you guys doing in this market? What's been working? What's not been working? Yeah, guys. Even if you have charts, man, post them and, and just ask for help, man. Like, what can we do for you right now? How can we help you? What kind of questions you guys got? I hear our big real estate guy, Joe, is out there, like, flipping houses and shit. <laughs> yeah, Joe had a busy day today, so I decided to step in. Yeah, That's man, I love it. I see you guys. Like, we're a team here, right? So, like, if Joe can't make it, I help him out. If I can't make it, Joe helps out. Tosh can't make it, Bao helps out. So that's just like in training and in the real world, you need a team around you to help you. You need a tab around you to help you. And Joe is a little bit busier today, so I'm there to pick him up. Yeah, man, that's how we do it, man. So you guys, so, so the members never suffer. So you guys always have content. You always have what you need. Um, Ready Player One, how do you narrow down your stocks to play on day one plays? Oh, dude, I'll show you mine. But Alex, you want to talk about yours first? Yeah, I mean, it depends, right? So if I see two hot chicks on a day and one of them is easy to borrow an SSR and one of them is hard to borrow, the hard to borrow one's obviously going to have my attention. The less red flags that a stock has, the more interested I am in trading it on day one. 
Dude, I love that. I, just to add on that, guys, a little quick trick that I do, um, and this is more if I'm mobile, obviously. This is literally just a laptop that I'm showing you right now. I have a main you know, trading setup where I kind of mimic this, though. Um, I love TD Ameritrade just for charting, but I use DOS for trading, right? So on the screen that I do have TD Ameritrade up, this is what I actually like to do, man. Check this out. This is a really cool trick that I think you guys will probably like, because I don't think I've ever talked about this before. I will put, now, of course, I've changed them up since doing this webinar, but I will put put the strongest stocks in the morning on top. So I'm not guessing, dude. I'm not like, wait, if I had to do a really quick glance, I'm not like, okay, there's six runners, you know, this is this, they're all mixed match. No, dude, I want to do the weakest ones on the bottom or low hanging fruit that I want to play. So, you know, as you guys noticed, like, like um, camp this morning, because this was so under view up and so weak, I put it at the bottom and I think I had things like CPTA, um, IMMP was obviously up here because it was super strong. But like, dude, put the strongest stocks up top. Maybe that's just like an identifier for you. Maybe they're front side or maybe they're bouncing off VWAP over and over again and you think you might get a launch. So I like to say it like this. The, up, the upper level or where I put my charts and segregate them and kind of categorize are one, either the strongest where I want to hit outer lines or backside and then these are where I want to hit little pops or into previous tops like low hanging fruit. So I don't know. I just thought that that was a cool little trick that I've been using for years that maybe you guys might like to kind of help you, especially when you're new. But um, yeah, thanks, Sean. You know, I, I hope that helps, man. Seriously. It's just, it's just, a, it's all visual, dude. So if you have little tips and tricks, it could help. Yep. <clears throat> what, would ta what would Tosh do? I, sometimes I don't even know what I would do. <laughs> Who, someone admit it, man. Who fought Gene today, dude? Let's talk about it. Who fought Gene? Two um, oh. How do you control emotion or prevent trading when you are red on the day? That's actually a great question. What helped me in the past is I would revenge trade definitely. Uh, but what now I do is like whenever I take a loss or whenever uh, I kind of break my plan and have to get out, I get up to my desk and I take a 10 minute break. After that 10 minute break, my mindset uh, gets controlled again. Because oftentimes you get too emotional after a loss and it kind of screws you up. So being able to even walk away 10, 15 minutes, get a coffee, get some food uh, is what you have to do or else you're gonna sit there and just keep fucking trying to bulldoze it and fight it. And it's not really gonna make much of a difference and you're gonna lose. Yeah, and just to add on that, guys, because I would say word for word is you have to, in the beginning, understand how to be your own best friend and, you know, sit on your hands and not trade and go make a snack or take a walk like Alex does um, or, you know, walk your dog. Like one of mine is just walk the dog. Dude. If I take a loss and I'm like, you know, really or I'm feeling like maybe I'm even green and I'm feeling a lot of FOMO and I'm like, dude, I have to step away. I'm just going to use that as an excuse to let my dog take a shit, dude. Seriously. Outside of that, if, <laughs> yeah, say walk the dog. If you can't do that yourself, bro, call up your broker and say, cut me off. Just, just leave it up to the broker, man. Seriously, eliminate yourself from being even able to trade. So if you can't do it yourself, leave it up to the broker. Yep. I can't, dude, I can't tell you about how many times in the past years, dude, I was like, Chris, I'm going to trade Gene all day unless you cut me off. Cut me off right now. And he'll be like, I got you. And I was like, thank God. You just got to learn from your mistakes, man. All right, so I see a couple guys fought today. It's okay, man. Just use it as a learning lesson, but, you know, just learn from it. That's all you can do. Um, in your recent YouTube video, you said that you feel like you are underperforming in this market. Are you looking at big picture in terms of yearly gain instead of one particular month gain? Uh, so here's, here's the problem, man, because, like, something that I've learned, obviously, from Bao and from other people is that it doesn't matter how much money you make. There's always someone making more money than you, no matter what. It doesn't matter if I think I make money, someone else makes more money than me. You think you make money. Maybe you think I make more than you. So it, it's just a losing, like an ever ending, never ending losing scenario and losing mindset. The problem is in the social media world that we live in, everyone's posting their numbers. Everyone's showing you how big their dick is. Yep. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you avoid it. It's there regardless. So sometimes I feel like if I'm not making, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand a day that I'm underperforming. But then after I really sit back and think about it, I think about uh, what my trading was like when I was trading that size. And based on my personality, when I trade massive size, 
I find myself a little bit more depressed and a little bit more upset because I am stressed. I'm not really eating. I'm not really leaving the house. My mind is consumed with trading. My mind is consumed with everything that it kind of ends up hurting me. So I kind of realized that uh, swinging for the fences and going for the big numbers just isn't based on my personality anymore. I find more uh, happiness from making two or four grand a day with my eyes closed rather than making 40 grand stressed and kind of losing my hair. So going back to your question, um, uh, what do I feel like? Why do I feel like I'm underperforming or stuff like that? I feel like that when I see other people's numbers and then I realize that I am not comfortable trading with a million dollar account. I am not comfortable trading with a hundred thousand shares again. I am comfortable making my 2k a day, enjoying my day, putting trading away after I have my day and just focusing on my real life. And you know, everyone wants the hundred K days. Everyone wants that stuff, but most people are not willing to accept that you have to lose the exact same amount, if not more, uh, to be able to deal with that. And I'm just, I'm just not interested in it anymore. Yeah. And this goes so beyond even just trading guys. It's like, again, in life, the key to happiness is where's your focus, right? If you're, if you're the guy looking at, you know, cars all day, you know, and, and wondering why you don't have it or comparing yourself to people on Instagram, or like Alex said, you know, these, these guys who post $17,000 today and 200 grand tomorrow, where's your focus on the fact that you're not them. So that's a negative focus. If you're focusing on every single day, looking at your own trades and being appreciative of what you have or the things that you're learning, you're actually focused focusing on growth. So literally if you're at a crossroads and you're looking left and that's all the growth of where you are, no matter how slow it's still growth and progress, or you're looking right and you're, and that's the path of comparison, you're going to die every time going right, dude, you need to focus on your own journey and look, dude, bows on chapter 64 of his life. Well, maybe me 69, and Alex, are, probably dude, say, yeah, he's definitely on 69. Me and Alex are maybe on 34 and guys, some of you guys might be on chapter two and that's okay, dude. That's okay. Get to chapter three, man. So don't focus on chapter 70, you know, where Bal's about to get to. <laughs> Just where's your focus, man. Uh, you with a 30% rule, uh, you mentioned that the 70% is when it's going your way. How can you tell the trade is working for you and you're not on a temporary pullback to move? Oh, I love this question, Alex. I know how to answer this, but you want to answer this? For, it, I think, well, I think we kind of do it a little differently, but I, so here's the way I do it, Vlad is, is say, God, I wish, do we have an example today? Um, shoot. I don't shit where's my yeah mbrx mbrx was actually something so let me actually pull up mbrx the key the the thing that i do every single day with outer lines so i'm just going to show you an example like i was shorting mbrx i should have saved the damn chart um i shorted up here i absolutely top tick this but when it got under vwap it didn't feel weak enough for me to add so i actually just covered around this area if this would have death candle slam gave me one of these candles i feel that that's a trade that, that is just so unbelievably confirming my thesis of, hey, I got 30% up here. Now this is a massive, massive rejection. Maybe there's a lot of meat to come down. That's when I'm going to start throwing on some size. This was not one of those trades. And then look what it did. It squeezed right back up because it wasn't convincing enough for me. But that's at least how I go about the 30% rule is how convincing is once it gets under VWAP and how much room is left, do I want to be confident throwing on or even doubling my size because maybe I only have 30% versus a hundred. Alex, do you look at that a little bit different? No, that's exactly what it is, man. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah, dude. How, how much more can you milk out of the move? This dude, I just didn't feel like I can milk shit out of the move. So I covered right here, man. And I never touched it again. That was it, dude. That was, this was not up enough. So that's a, that's a great way to determine Alex's 30% rule in my opinion, or at least a way to start it. Yep. Exactly. Um, yeah, realistically, dude, look at realistically, there's no reason to be shorting on front side, but we are all emotional. We are all fucking humans. So I get it. And the 30% rule is a way to kind of keep us crazy motherfuckers uh, safe from ourselves. <laughs> Seriously, dude. We're all masochists, man. It's just how, how reckless are some of us. And if you're really reckless, dude, you need, to, you need to put some shit in place, man, or you're done. It's like this, man. It's like when you're driving a fucking Ferrari or a Lambo, you could drive without your fucking seatbelt, bro. Who cares? Maybe you're going to be fine. But that one time that you don't is game over. Only spot. takes one time, dude. Exactly. So put your seatbelt on at all times. Use a 30% rule. Use hard stops. And I guarantee you that you will 
have an everlasting trading career. Alex, did you ever see that that new movie with Christian Bale, bro? It's got to be one of the best movies I've seen in like the last 10 years, man. I'd give it like, dude, I'd give it like a 99%. But did you see Ford versus Ferrari? Uh, of course, dude. Dude, how sick was that? But guess what, man? That that one crash, dude, all it took was that one day where the car was malfunctioning, bro. That's the point of trading, man. It's like... Bro, dude, all you, it takes is you banking 100K a day, 200K a day, and then one gene comes, you go all in, and then you're all of a sudden down all that money plus more. So well, and bro, back to the same thing. let's be honest, Alex, without naming names, how many you know, quote unquote, boss ass traders that we're all impressed with. How many have we seen, dude, make 17K today, 4K tomorrow, 100K the next day? Bro, we've never heard of them again. Bro, there's so many traders that don't fucking exist anymore. They man. don't exist. People, They're dinosaurs. I've seen people that made fucking three, four, five million dollars four years ago that don't have a dollar to their name now because they were not trading properly. That money came yep. in a... It came the wrong way and it left the wrong way as well because they had no idea what the hell they were doing. But... Again, I have no problem, guys, sticking to my daily boring process, making two to four K a day, looking back at the end of the year, being up five hundred grand to a million dollars, trading one hour a day, enjoying my day, spending with family, friends, whatever the hell I want, rather than all these other guys that are trading for eight hours a day, upset, stressed, taking their anger out on their family and friends. Like after you have a certain amount of money, you learn that money doesn't mean anything. It's just and all these people kind of chasing the money and chasing these multi-million dollar years. It's good. It's great. But after you have a certain amount, it's not really going to matter. So you have to find what really works for you. And for me, an extra, I don't know, fucking hundred K or 200 K a year isn't going to change my life, but taking an extra couple hours off every day is that and that's is what matters. matters. And that's repeatable for the next hundred years. Alex can do exactly what he's doing with the least amount of stress for dude, literally until he dies. Like think about the guys sweating and losing their hair and, and aging overnight because they're swinging such big size. And look this year, maybe they make 10 million next year, dude, wh what kind of cost to your health and who's to say they can do it again without giving back seven. Who knows, dude, like fuck that. Yep, Exactly. Yeah, nail and bail, man, attitude is, is a way of life, dude. Seriously. Plus, if you nail and bail, um, if you nail and bail, you allow yourself to just stay protected because the longer you hold, the more odds there are of the casino, the house, the market winning, you know? This is why we have zombie hour, man. Literally, it's when the edge goes back to the market, not the retail short traders. Nice move, man. Oliver, dude, uh, when did Oliver become a thief in the night, bro? He is kicking ass these days. Shout out Oliver, man. I love it, dude. He's really doing good, man. Very nice, brother. Very nice. I love it, man. I love it. What else, brother? Dude, I'm telling you right now, man, I... uh thinking about uh i think about going for a drive i took my car to the shop uh the other day so i'm a little bit carless for a couple days as i had to just fix an alignment thing but man once it gets oh, back shit. out how dude, much they charge that shit dude oh, fuck dude don't ask <laughs> oh, bro it's like here's the best part it's um it's uh what is it it's 500 dollars for the part it's 900 for the lane oh, <laughs> so you fucking scumbag so i'm paying like six uh, come on bro <laughs> Dude, it's nothing in the scheme of things, but oh my God, how can the labor be like, I'm telling you, it's like double just because the labor takes so There's long. There's got to be a mechanic here in MIC that's called bullshit on that one, dude. Probably. Of course, dude. It's the Mercedes dealership. They're going to rape me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking rate me man and, and the beautiful thing about it alex is their business model it's like bro i know i'm getting raped like i'm shaking this fucking guy's hand and i'm yeah, like tosh is excited tosh is like yeah here take my thousand dollars i'm like here bro just rate me just give me my car back <laughs> motherfucker that's funny <laughs> just get a ford fiesta <laughs> how about a oh man ford versus ferrari man i gotta watch that today Haunted time, no way. That's dude. why Bow has the Camry, dude. The Camry doesn't give him any fucking headaches, bro. And when it breaks, like a freaking a freaking transmission could drop. It'll probably be only like nine hundred bucks in the Camry. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, Bow will find a coupon for it. Yeah, I swear to God, dude, he would walk to the dealership if he could save ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> be like, you need a courtesy vehicle? Sure, I would love one. How much is it? Yep, nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Man.
How about you, Alex? You taking drives out there, man? Is it is it cold enough? Uh, to- I'm, taking, I'm taking some drives, bro. I'm chilling. The uh, the problem here in Jersey, bro, is like when it's cold, it's freezing. Yeah. When it's hot, it's humid. So it just sucks, man. It really just sucks. But what I've been trying to really do is I've been just trying like go out uh, at the close, like to go out and like get some food outside. Hell yeah, uh, man. The outdoor restaurants are open again, so like I'm trying to find ways to become a human again because. I'm fucking, I'm checked out, bro. I can't do this quarantine stuff anymore. Dude, I'm, I, I'm going to tell you right now, man, I went through some serious depression over this last weekend, dude. I, I, this, this quarantine has affected us, man. And like, we are so blessed to do what we do, but still guys, this is so against what human nature is to be cooped up in a butt. Like, man, it's tough, dude. And, and we're healthy, bro. And it's tough, man. It's like, oh my God, I'm losing my mind sometimes, man. So you know, having a process in and out of trading, guys, is just what gets you back to your fucking sanity, dude, is huge, man. And, and I just, I, sometimes I have to go for a drive. I don't care if I go anywhere. I just have to get out. And it's like, yeah, but I want to be- everyone needs, awesome. everyone needs a way to disconnect from the market. And whether that's like family, whether that's friends, whether that's whatever that is, for me, my way of disconnecting is I got to turn off the computer. I got to turn off the lights in my office. I got to go for a drive. I got to- uh, just do anything that kind of gets me away from the market just for like even an hour or two. Cause I come back, I answer PMs, I do a bunch of stuff, but just oh, for yeah. the sake of clearing my head for an hour or two, this, I just got to get away from this thing because if it's already on my mind 24 seven. So I got to at least step away for a couple hours, you know? Yeah, dude. I, I like to equate like, <laughs> pardon the, like the analogy, but dude, traders are like horny teenagers. It's like, all you have is one thing on your mind 24 seven. And once you kind of get bit by the bug of trading, it's going to be charts, dude. It's going to be making money. It's going to be P and L's, but you have to figure out how to not be that horny trader and just focus back on life again. And like Alex said, family and what brings you peace. And bro, I, I swear to God, man, I, I used to meditate like kind of heavily nowadays. I can't go a day without, I meditate two times a day, dude, for like 30 minutes. I, I have to. Tosh goes in the bathtub. He gets the candles out. Bro, he gets to tell you right now, out. I get out the romance novels. I'm making a whole thing. Yeah, Tosh puts on the baby making music. Putting on vampire diaries and all that shit. Yeah. Oh man. Hi, welcome to Barnes and Noble. What can I get you? Uh, young adult, please. <laughs> young romance. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, shoot me a link to the best bath bombs. <laughs> <laughs> guys, any, any trading questions or process questions or anything that relates to how we can better um, anything that you're struggling with, man, specifically? And let me just pull this up real quick, guys, just so you also have my point of contact. Uh, do, 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 uh, you know what? I guess I took it down, but I'll just write it right here. Um, text Tosh. At, just so you have this, I'll keep this up. If you guys have any questions, man, coming in the club, if you have any questions, um, if you have, you know, any concerns, anything that you want to see first, we don't do free trials, but... Um, I, you know, I can send you a recording of this, you know, video if you haven't seen it or whatever, things like that. But, um, we're going to get you in, man. And you're going to love MIC. I'm telling you, if you lost 197 in your trading today, guys, like why not just try to invest in your education? I mean, that's a whole month at MIC. Dude. I just don't get it, dude. I just don't get it, dude. Like, I just, like, what, like, like if you're paying $200, just $6 a day for education that is going to teach you how to make thousands of dollars a day. I just don't get why people don't try it or why these people are so hesitant. I know there's a lot of scammers out there. I get that. Yeah. That so is- some people are shell shocked. They come to me all the time and they're like, Tosh, I've gotten burned so many times in the past. Can I try out MIC for a day? Just so I know you guys are legit. I'm like, dude, how do we not look legit? And simultaneously, look, I understand where you're coming from, but no, dude, if you're willing to give Mercedes 1600, you just pot an annual there. You can do it here. We're going to teach you how to real trade. <laughs> Bro, but here, here's the thing, man. The thing is like, I went to a relatively cheap college and I still paid like 20 grand a year. And MIC is a 10th of that and teaches you how to make 10 times the amount of college. Isn't that insane? People that don't try it, man. But That's insane, man. at the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people out there that are lazy and I get that. And they want to get rich quick, free, this yeah. that type of thing. And those people are going to go broke. So to me, man, it's like I am only willing to help people that want to be helped. I don't want to help someone that doesn't understand how 
special an opportunity like this is. Yeah. So at the end of the day, man, uh, the people in this community, the people in this club are the hardworking people. And I am almost confident that everyone in here is going to find success if they continue to put in the work. Dude, everybody wants to help the hungry, grateful guy that asks questions. You know what I mean? We don't want to help the cocky asshole that's like, look, dude, I know you guys got a strategy, but I like my style, but okay, what can you show me? No, dude, we don't want that mentality. We want someone who's taking away their ego and saying, okay, I know I've done this for years and it's not working. Let me eliminate all that. What do I need to focus on? And we're going to teach you the bro, right steps. I am human, bro. I am human. I don't care how much money I have in the bank. If there was an opportunity that I had to pay fucking Bobby Axelrod to learn how to trade, I'm going to fucking pay that motherfucker. Dude, I want right? to learn the best. And if Ooh. people are too naive or too ignorant to realize that shit, then they will not find success in any aspect of their life because they have too much of an ego. Yeah. Yeah. Ego is look, be, ego is the number one problem of anything at the end of the day, because you are basically becoming a talker versus a listener. You're saying, I know what to expect. I know what's going to be offered. I know how life goes. Dude, if you just close your mouth and open up your ears every now and then you might actually learn some really cool shit, man, or get an opportunity that comes in and really changes your game in whatever it is, man. I mean, I mean, education there's... is something they can't ever take away from you, man. It doesn't matter what else happens. Education is something they can't take away. I don't care what the hell happens. As long as the stock market doesn't close, I have now learned a skill that I'm never going to fucking forget. And God willing, I don't think the stock market is going to disappear anytime soon because the richest people in the world need it. Uh, I am able to now have a career at any, if I want to stop trading for the next five years and go on a boat and travel to fucking Maui, I could do that and then I can come back five years later and get back to trading on a computer and just get back into the swing of things. You can't say that about everything out there. So it's just a very unique opportunity that we have. Dude, 100%. Although I would recommend, Alex, after a five-year hiatus, maybe take it a little slow. <laughs> get your sea legs again, dude. Maybe uh, go in 100 shares on your first trade. Yeah, you know, you know the deal. I know exactly what you mean, man. It, it'll come back, dude. Like, I, um, I'm a huge sports player, man, and – Fuck, dude, I almost went pro in baseball, dude. I swear to God, dude, I was like all world. And, and I played on Dodger Stadium when I was, and when I was younger, man. And, and, and I, if I went that way, like that's the whole thing. But it comes back, dude. The minute I pick up a baseball or a bat, dude, or a glove, like I'm in my element, man. That's how it goes, right? So that's just like trading, man. You could, but you learn something that you could do for life. Like if you really know how to sink a three-pointer, man, you're going to be able to do that probably for the rest of your life. You may be a little, you know – a little rusty in between years of you know hiatus but you're gonna have that skill man seriously yeah and the thing is man the thing is like it took me and bow so much money to learn these lessons that oh yeah fuck man like it, it just doesn't make sense like you really want to go through the learning curve again you really want to create a new wheel you really want to just figure it out yourself or do you want to kind of skip the line and just get right to the front it just, I don't know. It just doesn't make well, sense. Well, the, yeah, the, the, num the number one, you know, fallacy of thinking, guys, is thinking you can do it yourself. And I, I swear to God, I, I can't say this enough. And I'm not even talking about joining MIC or, or anything in the stock market. I'm saying the guys in this world, in any industry, real estate, you know, marketing, starting a business online, if you have $2,000 to your name, which is pretty much, I, I want to say the general um, price for a major, major course that'll teach you something like our annual is 1890. That's usually the general price for anything, right? If you, if you have $2,000 to your name and, and you're like, dude, I'm going to do this on my own versus getting education. That is the stupidest thinking I've ever heard in my life. And again, I'm not even talking about MIC. I don't care if it is real estate or whatever. Pay the masters $2,000 to learn something you can do for the rest of your life. The guys that try to do it themselves and don't fork over like a little bit of investment in themselves, like maybe that 2000, bro, they will be treading water and they will be the same person on the sidewalk when you run into them four years later because they didn't learn the fundamentals. And the so here, I want to I ask you something. So I was, I was uh, dealing with some computer issues yesterday, so I wasn't really around. So I was yeah. kind of late to everything. And just like everyone else should be doing, I watch every single video that we create and we produce. I don't care how many millions I have in the bank. I still watch everything, right? So yep. if I do it, you should do it. So I was watching Bao's uh, recap yesterday on the TV in my living room. And my boy, Ryan, uh, was kind of talking to me and he was listening to Bao. He's cracking up a little bit. And he's like, 
what do you think makes MIC different than everyone else? And I was like, it's well, number one is that we actually teach people how to trade. Believe it or not, everyone else doesn't teach people how to trade. They teach you how to become a follower and to buy random shell companies and hope that they're going to go higher. And what he mentioned to me was like, yeah, that's definitely a big part of what you guys do. But the also like the, the most important thing is that it's something that everyone could do, right? It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Chinese, Filipino, orange, you identify as a microphone. I don't, I don't know what this <laughs> is, but it's like going to the gym, right? It doesn't matter what you are. As long as you go to the gym and you put in those reps, you will have the same amount of muscles as someone else. And it's the same thing about trading. It doesn't matter your ethnicity. It doesn't matter anything. If you go and you put in the reps of watching the videos, you will get muscles. You will get bigger. You will make money. So it's the same fucking thing always, man. It's, this is, uh, this is a really, really, really tough industry because the earning potential is unlimited, man. If I wanted me with enough dedication, enough hard work and enough money, I could make a billion dollars in the market if I really want it. Cause there's no cap. I'm not saying I have the talent to do that, but the opportunity but the potential is there. That's is the whole there, point. Man. You can yes. make fucking a million, 10 million, 20, 50, hundred million dollars in the market if you really wanted to. And because of that potential, obviously it's not fucking easy. Obviously you have to go put in the work. So just like going to the gym, if you want to see results, you have to put in the work and it's as simple. Dude, if, if Bao's a drunk and I fucking figured this out when I'm 19, there's no excuse that someone with a good head on their shoulders can't do it. Dude, for real. Seriously, man. And I love Bao and he knows I'm fucking around. <laughs> of course. But that's the point, guys. Do you guys understand the, the mentality behind this shit? It's like, it's people always see the numbers. People always see the, the success. They'll see the cars. They'll see the watches. They'll see the houses. But they don't remember that shit, man. I was, what is it? Are we in February, March? I think it's like six and a half years I've been trading, which is fucking, it's, it's now I feel fucking old, dude. I can't, I can't believe it. But if you do anything for six years, I don't care if it's, lifting weights, whacking off, whatever it is, you're, you're going to become really, really good at it. The problem <laughs> is that most people don't last in this game for this long because they don't follow the rules, right? And we created a set of rules that is going to keep you safe, right? These rules are going to keep you safe and keep you in the game for an extended period of time. So if you choose not to follow it, so be it, you will not last. Dude, that was the funniest shit in the world. You actually said two analogies that kind of complement each other. If you become a whack master and then you can't, can't last. I was like, dude, if you become a whack master, you can probably last forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh man, too funny, but so true, man. It's like, guys, it's just- Yo, one second. There's someone outside revving outside my house. I wonder if this is a fucking pool. Is it, is it Pete? I don't know. Tell Pete I said hi. Alex always has like a flock of people at his house, man. I'm telling you, it's like, uh, it's like entourage over there. You show up to his house and everybody's chilling. Uh, I got no clue who the fuck that was, but they're gone now. <laughs> Pete did a drive-by, bro. He's out of there. He's back to the hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think, did we get all the questions? You guys actually try anything? I think we got all the questions. Guys, if we missed, just type it again. But uh, if you didn't get your questions answered, but... Yeah, man, again, dude, this, this is not rocket science. It's, we're very much ordinary people. Um, Bao's a perfect example of that, man. He likes to have fun. He likes to drink. He likes to do his thing. He likes to take a day off every now and then to go get foot rubs. Um, dude, eat pho. You know, it's like, there's no special sauce, man. There's no secret sauce. And I think the problem with a bunch of new traders or new, new anybody in any industry is, but trading is so much about it because it's it, because people look at it as a get rich quick. They think like, unless, you know, there's this secret code or there's a secret sauce that I know, I know you got, you know, a thousand members in the chat room and you're teaching them, but give me the real shit. Give me the, what do you mean, dude? It's being taught. There is no secret sauce. We are teaching the secret sauce. Like, it's like the secret sauce is hard work, man. If Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan didn't show you that, it's like, I don't know who can, dude. The secret sauce is nothing other than hard work. What will tomorrow's hot chick be? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but. 
CPTA? Hopefully it's CPTA. Let this go to five. <laughs> nah, dude. I honestly, I hope Genie even goes higher, man. I want this to like, I want this to go to like 15 and offer us some serious meat to come down. If this held right here, though, we've got some outer lines tomorrow, which I'll be excited about. But um, yeah, so that's just part of it, man. And then, you know, again, like, what's on radar for tomorrow outer lines, right? It's like, what are we looking at? We're looking at, um, we're looking at MBRX for tomorrow. We're looking at gene. We're looking at IMMP. We're looking at camp. We're looking at CPTA already. If you guys pay attention already, we have five tickers that are on radar for a play today. So when, you know, you're a new trader and you're like, man, I don't, I don't, there's just not enough plays or this not, dude. Yes, there is. There's already five potentials tomorrow for a great trade. And all you need is one good trade a day. That's it. And then, you know, there'll be day one runners tomorrow. These are going to be day twos. There'll be day one runners, man. It'll be great. Hopefully we get a new gene tomorrow. And with all these pumpers in the industry, you know, we probably will. <laughs> yeah, man, seriously, Albert, dude, I need some more screen real estate, dude. This is crazy. There's almost too many runners. Today I was like, what the hell? Guys, any more questions? Alex, you have any on your end? Uh, I think that's it, brother. On the YouTube side, no. Anything that you guys want us to cover before we wrap up? Anything that you want to know about? Anything that, um... damn, dude, Gene is really breaking down. I wanted this to hold up, shit. Fuck okay, it, dude, we'll get it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll get it tomorrow. I just, man, I wanted this to go to like 13 on a gap up, shit. If people understood the power of one good trade, they would lose their money. Seriously, bro. Seriously. Everybody thinks that they have to maximize everything, bro. Everybody does. You just got to have process, man. You just got to have process in life. I mean, think, think about that. You know, you know, who has the best process in the world, dude. Think about, think about who has the best process in the world. The tax man, dude. Every single year we have to pay by a certain date and they give you a little bit of leniency, but they get their money, dude. That's a perfect process, bro. Is like Uncle Sam gets his money. There's no different from any other kind of process. You set something up that works. You can implement a set of rules where you get paid to do so and you rinse and repeat, dude. Become the Uncle Sam of the market. Yep. I think that's it, brother. <laughs> While you are on the webinar, Austin is banking on Gene. Oh my God. Son crazy? of a bitch. Wow. Beast. Nice. 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 I think Midtown did really good on it too. Awesome job guys. Seriously. If you, so, so we'll leave you with this guys. We'll leave it with this. If you fought Gene short all day, guys, please look in the mirror and ask why. Um, maybe, maybe, you know, just, just risk management guys, hard stops, max daily loss. Maybe if you're not ready for real time, just go back to a simulator. Do not fight trend. If you found yourself waiting for backside and then you were able to maybe do 30% size, that's good. That's part of the process. Again, I wouldn't have shorted this today after zombie hour for anything, but, but if you did just make sure that you're following the safest route possible and not trying to guess tops, man. Cause the first way to die uh, specifically with a small account guys is try to fight trend. It's the number one way to die. So just be safe out there, man. There's a lot of craziness in this market. It's in what's up, buddy. Alex, awesome stuff, man. Seriously, thanks for coming on, dude. Jo I'll, we'll have Joe next week. And, dude, if you're filling up to it, maybe we might have to do a three-way. <laughs> yep. Let's see, bro. Let's see, brother. See how you're feeling, man. We'll definitely have everybody on. The real estate expert, Joe. <laughs> I love it, man. Thanks, guys, for attending. <laughs> see you, buddy. See you, guys. Have a great week.